The 2019-20 season may as well have occurred in a black hole for Gareth Bale. A full year has gone by since we last examined Bale's fractured relationship with Real Madrid, his teammates Zinedine Zidane and the fans. But despite Zidane seemingly having a U-turn by saying that he's going to rely on Bale this season after a failed move to China, a full Real Madrid campaign yielded just 1,200 minutes played across 20 appearances in all competitions. Hey, I'm Adrian, and a lot has happened since we checked in on Bale and Real Madrid, hasn't it? At least, a lot has happened off of the pitch, in the stands, etc. Let's examine that, what Bale had to say in an enlightening interview with Sky Sports recently, how he and Zidane constantly have contradicted each other, the infamous flag celebration, and how Real Madrid are so desperate to be rid of him that they are considering cutting their losses and letting him go for free. The last video that I did on this Bale vs Madrid topic was published on July 30th, 2019, so before the failed move to China, and that covered pretty much all of Bale's time with Madrid, how he gets on with his teammates and assertions that he doesn't take on the Spanish lifestyle, doesn't speak Spanish, doesn't meet up with his teammates for dinner, etc. His early relationship with Zidane. I mean, I've linked that video in the description and I highly recommend you watch that prior to this one, unless you're an absolute mad lad, which in that case, great to have ya. So last summer, during Real Madrid's preseason tour of the United States, it looked as if Bale was on his way out, with Zinedine Zidane saying it would be better if he left, and rumours were rife that he was about to take off to Jiangsu Suning in China. That move collapsed, and Zidane seemed to have accepted that he would have to make use of the 30 million euros per season Welshman, as he stated on August 15th, 2019, quote, it seemed that Bale was going to leave, but today he is here with us. The dynamics are changing, things are changing. From now on, I will rely on him, as on others. I will rely on all the players who are here. He has his place, he is an important player, and I hope that all the players will make the task of choosing a team difficult. Okay, so perhaps a break in the clouds for this whole situation? It seemed to be so, as just a couple days later, Bale started in the first of three consecutive La Liga matches for Real Madrid, assisting once and scoring a brace to save a point for Real Madrid versus Villarreal. But then things started to get rocky for Bale once again, whether that be down to being left out of the squad without injury, or his calf problem that has ruled him out of matches many times in the past along with his ankles, an infection in January that caused him to miss the Supercopa de España, the list goes on. Injury, infection, a healthy omission from the matchday squad, all of that amounted to just 20 appearances across all competitions for Real Madrid during the 2019-20 season. That's 12 starts and 4 substitute appearances in La Liga. He appeared in less than half of Real Madrid's matches during their title winning campaign. He played and scored in one of Real Madrid's three Copa del Rey matches against Unionista. In their Copa del Rey quarterfinal against Real Sociedad, as he was not even included in the squad, he infamously left the stadium in the 80th minute, with Spanish paper AS sharing video of him leaving the Bernabeu while there was still time left on the clock, and his team was behind. Now, an article from The Independent, which of course is linked below with my other sources, say it with me now, <laughs> they note that Real Madrid's policy is that non-playing members of the squad may leave the match after the 80th minute, so technically, he didn't do anything wrong. But that's not the kind of behavior you want or expect from a teammate when you're fighting for a place in the semi-finals of the National Cup competition and are 4-1 down. And then, following the lockdown enforced break for football, Bale seemed to have embraced the meme that he has become on the Real Madrid sidelines. Sure, he started two matches after the return, one against Mallorca and one against Ibar, clearly not trusted to feature against more difficult opponents as they were both at the bottom of the table. In fact, stories began to emerge following Madrid's 2-0 victory over Mallorca that Zidane was completely finished with Bale, as he was not tracking back on the right wing to help Danny Carvajal and allegedly accused the Welshman of treating the match like a training exercise. And from then on, we never saw him again, or at least on the pitch. Instead, we saw Bale pretending to take naps, sliding his mask up from his mouth to his eyes, you know, to help ensure the conditions were perfect for a quick power nap, then using a roll of medical tape to complete a pair of hand binoculars. I mean, this is schoolboy stuff, it's immature, and it does make it hard to make a case that favors Bale when you see him doing stuff like this. It was widely condemned, and rightfully so. And then, perhaps as a way of hitting back, Zidane did not include Bale in the squad on the final match day of La Liga. 
And then again, for their second leg match against Manchester City, Bale was not included in the squad that traveled to the Emirates. Why? Well, according to Zidane, quote, he preferred not to play. The rest remains between him and me, but he said he didn't want to play. The same scenario happened with another player that was iced out in James Rodriguez. James was unhappy to ride the bench and wanted to be on the pitch, so he asked Zidane to not include him in the matchday squads if he didn't intend to pick him, and Zidane obliged. Bale, well, he handled it differently. In October of 2019, ex-Real Madrid player Pedro Mijatovic gave an interview to El Arguero in which he commented on Gareth Bale's situation at the club. One particular passage from that interview started a chain of events that added even further fuel to the Bale vs Real Madrid fire. Quote, but to have someone like that at the club, who they say isn't integrated and has other, more important worries than his own team and his club, the first thing he thinks about is Wales, then golf, and after that, Real Madrid. Wales, then golf, then after that, Real Madrid. Now from that interview, the media outlet AS did a bit of a no-no in adding in that order to Mijatovic's quote, despite him not actually saying it himself. In fact, the in that order wasn't included in the interview itself, but in the tweet promoting the article. This kind of stuff, Unfortunately, you see it all the time in journalism, and AS even owned up to their mistake later on, as they were f sort of forced into doing so, <laughs> given the way things transpired following that tweet. How? While representing Wales, Bale and his teammates celebrated their Euro 2020 qualification while holding onto a Welsh flag that quoted the AS article headline, or at least the tweet that promoted the article containing the interview with Mijatovic. Wales, golf, Real Madrid, in that order. This no doubt pissed off his club and the supporters of said club to a new degree, while for others who support the club, it probably came as no surprise that he was pulling this off considering the last few years and the growing tensions between Bale and the club itself. And then, as the gift that keeps on giving, Bale gave an interview while he was representing Wales almost a year later in September of 2020. Bale and Wales, that's when you get the juicy stuff. In speaking to Sky Sports on September 2nd, Bale spoke candidly about his Real Madrid debacle. When asked what's next at Real Madrid, whether Bale was staying or going, he replied with, quote, I think the club needs to answer that question because as I've said, I tried to leave last year and they blocked everything at the last second. It was a project I was excited for last year, but it didn't materialize. And there's been another instance where we've tried to go and the club won't allow it or they've done something. What can I say? I want to play football. I'm still motivated to play football. I can't really do much. They're in control of everything. It's in the club's hands and they make things very difficult, to be honest. He was also asked if he would want to return to the Premier League, which he said he would of course consider it, if it is an option. And speaking of which, and tying into what Bale said about the club blocking an opportunity he was excited about, he could have been referring to the move to China, of course, but if former Real Madrid president Ramon Calderon is to be believed, as he has many connections at the club still, there was a massive bid from an English side last summer that Real Madrid turned down. As he was speaking to TalkSport, Calderon said, quote, I know in the last day of the transfer window last year, there was an offer from the Premier League. They offered 100 million euros and Real Madrid turned down that offer because they thought Bale would be a player in their side. Again, just to reiterate, we don't know if Bale was referring to the Premier League side or Jiangsu Suning when he spoke of wanting to leave for that project he said was exciting to him. But now, this has all backfired on Real Madrid as they are paying Bale upwards of 30 million euros per year to act a fool on the sidelines. So the desperation to offload him is rife in Madrid. Calderon and other sources have echoed that the situation has become so dire that Real Madrid are now looking to be rid of Bale one way or another, even if that requires allowing him to leave on a free. Some, like the Telegraph, have even mused that they would pay a portion of his salary in order to get him away from the club. <laughs> wow! Let him go for free and then even pay a portion of his salary. I mean, it's still a huge boon to Real Madrid's own finances because they're getting rid of a huge, huge wage. But still, this is crazy to think of. 
But one of the biggest sticking points here is that even at 50% of his wages, which are rumored to be around 600,000 pounds weekly, that's still 300 pounds per week amongst the most elite of elite contracts in the Premier League. And you would be paying that much money for a guy who is 31 years old hasn't played much in the last year or so, and even at a younger age, would quite often be unavailable due to injury, let alone in his early 30s now. So Real Madrid has truly shot themselves in the foot over this situation, over and over again. It was their call to give him this insane six-year contract back in 2016. It was their call to not sell him when Zidane had requested it back in 2018, right before leaving. And it was their call to not allow him to leave last summer when he wanted to, and there were offers on the table. So it's become sort of a chicken and an egg situation now. Who disrespected who first, the club or Bale? That would take some unprecedented access behind the scenes to know absolutely for sure. We'd have to be part of discussions between Bale and Zidane and Perez. But regardless, as things stand now, Bale and his bench antics are doing nothing to help rally support for him, really. While it's also difficult to sympathize with Real Madrid as they had opportunities to sell and they decided to block them. And that's it. Going forward, it certainly seems like Bale would prefer a move away, and it is hard to think of many clubs that would actually pay a fee for an injury-prone 31-year-old with insane wages. Perhaps he'd be willing to take a pay cut, but one thing's for sure, he won't make any concessions for Real Madrid, and he'll continue to be the most expensive pitch-side entertainer in the world if he has to. Thanks so much for watching guys, and I hope you enjoyed this update video. I truly didn't think that things would continue to get worse, as it seemed like we had found rock bottom between Bale and Real Madrid last summer. But football never fails to surprise us. So if you learned something new, then be sure to subscribe so you can find your way back to us much more easily. But other than that, I'm Adrian, I love ya, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.